Hello everyone, uh, my name is Milos Puzovic and today I'm going to talk about the work that we have done at ARM in order to accelerate la large language models to run efficiently on ARM uh, Neo CPUs. So let's di dive on the slide that we have prepared for you today. Um, as you are probably aware, if you want to run uh, models, ML, uh, machine learning models or deep learning models, uh, like image classification, object detection, LLMs, or recommendation models, you are usually running, running a large number of the labs uh, that you have implemented using a Python API in PyTorch. So for example, if we take one of those labs, uh, like a uh, linear layer, once you have implemented that uh, in PyTorch as an operator, that gets lowered to PyTorch uh, tensor library in A10. And from there on, uh, there are different ways how uh, you can accelerate that operator. One uh, way is using the gradual decomposition, uh, which is effectively following a top-down approach. And here on the left-hand side, you can see that approach where we would map linear layer, which is a general matrix multiplication uh, layer, into the open blast. Or another other alternative is to use a little bit deeper stack that is using IDIP, uh, which is a light wrapper around uh, one DNN library that in turn can call ARM compute library and can execute that matrix multiplication in an efficient way using uh, ARM in core accelerators. The advantage of this approach is that it is uh, very uh, fast, it encourages framework specific designs. And it can grow very quickly uh, your uh, use base of the practitioners because you can easily map those high level operators uh, to low level library calls. The problem with this approach, as you can probably notice here, is that it can duplicate uh, effort because you might end up having the same um, implementations in OpenBlast and ACL. Another approach uh, which has been introduced in with the PyTorch compiler. Uh, with PyTorch 2.0 is more of a bottom-up approach, uh, which is addressing technology-driven uh, considerations. So in this case, what you would do is that you would use a fixed set of computational operations and a fixed programming interface, such that you would lower a linear operator into a, a set of A10 core ops. And from then on, uh, you can use the techniques uh, from uh, compilers to lower that down to generate the efficient code that can make use of your in-core accelerators. Um, as you have seen with this approach, uh, what happens is that uh, these integration overheads are incurred at each layer of the stack. So as you have seen there, uh, if you want to be able to run a um, uh, PyTorch linear operator, which is in this case uh, dense layer, uh, we would go a call from PyTorch to 1DNN and ACL. And each of those uh, libraries is going to give you uh, additional overhead, which we have denoted here as a framework tax, because there are a certain uh, memory management and thread management functions that you need to enable uh, in order to efficiently use those libraries. So what can easily happen is that although uh, your library A, so maybe in this case ACL, generally outperforms some other library uh, B, like OpenBlast, but in certain situations, you need to integrate that library uh, inside of your uh, framework. The library B, B, because it is much easier to integrate it, can give you the better uh, performance because the framework tells that it needs to pay is lower. In order to address this uh, problem, we at ARM have introduced a new uh, library called Clyde, uh, which is the open technology, which we believe is going to empower developers to simplify the integration of a uh, ARM in-core accelerators into their frameworks. And as a result, it is going to enable much uh, bigger strength uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, so what Play BI is, it is a collection of a lightweight, uh, very highly performant ML kernels. Uh, it comes with no binary release, so it is a stateless uh, source file library which supports dynamic shapes, no memory allocations, and what is the most important, it doesn't have dependencies on the other libraries. Uh, as a result of this, uh, the target users who are AI experts uh, for the AI frameworks, uh, who are building the frameworks, SDKs, and the pipelines, can use uh, this library in different domains, including the classical ML, such as segmentation, object detection, hand tracking, face tracking, and also the Gen AI use cases, 
like client language models to fairly quickly accelerate uh, their frameworks so that they can make the best use of the ARM platforms. As you can see illustrated in this uh, next slide. So as you can see here, uh, uh, Clyde AI library is going to sit on top of the ARM uh, features. So in this case, the ARM in core accelerators such as S3, SME, Neon, um, integer multiplication as well. And it can be leveraged fairly simple as we will show in the rest of uh, this webinar by different parts of your software stack. So it can be directly integrated to the uh, PyTorch uh, Tensor Library, uh, but then also at the same time can be uh, integrated to the ACL. Uh, and not shown here, it can also be integrated to the OpenBlast. Or it can be also directly called uh, by your uh, ML compilers uh, when you need to make use of uh, microkernels or where it is not possible to generate a highly efficient and performant code uh, to run an ARM. Um, uh, with uh, compiler where the hand-tuned uh, version would be might, uh, more helpful. So to demonstrate uh, this uh, integration to the uh, PyTorch A10 uh, library, uh, we have used a uh, Chickly Fast, uh, which is a simple and efficient PyTorch native transformer that you can find on a um, GitHub link. And it has been used to showcase what kind of performance it is possible to get with a uh, native PyTorch. It follows a uh, two-step uh, process, where the first step is the quantization step. Uh, so in our case, uh, what we have done in quantization step is that we have quantized the weights of the model to be uh, four-bit integers. Uh, and they were, or we have only quantized the weights. Uh, and then once you have quantized the weights, we have saved those weights in a PTH file format. And then we have used the second step of GPT fast to actually do the uh, text generation, uh, which involves loading the model uh, that we have saved and then running that model, model execution using a uh, prompt. All the model definitions that are available are in uh, model PY. And in our work, what we have done is that we have used uh, Llama 2, 3, 3.1, and we have also used the uh, Google uh, Gemma model uh, as well uh, in our uh, tests. So in terms of the first step, uh, the quantizations, uh, what we have done is that we have uh, quantized weights, uh, which in this case, if you're looking at a uh, general matrix multiplication, it is the right-hand side matrix. And we have used the uh, uh, nomenclature where we said that uh, we have n rows and k columns. So uh, our matrix is in a uh, single precision floating point, uh, right time matrix. Uh, and what we have done is that we have used AFSMAX uh, quantization in order to uh, quantize these weights per channel, at, uh, in other words, row wise. So what that means is that we have, uh, uh, after the quantization, each of our uh, rows is now 8-bit integer. And in addition, each row is going to have also the scale, uh, which, is, uh, used, uh, which has been used to uh, quantize the model. So on average, what we have found using this type of approach uh, for quantization is that we have compressed about 87% uh, of the weights, uh, so the memory footprint has been reduced uh, by 87%. And in addition, uh, in this step, uh, what we have also done is that we have replaced each linear layer, uh, so this is the default one that you use when you implement your linear layer in your model, uh, with uh, a layer called weight only in for linear, uh, such that we know that when we are executing that uh, linear layer, it has been quantized to use uh, four bit integers. And then uh, in the next step process, it is the text generation. Uh, and that process can be actually uh, split into two parts. So the first part is the model load. So in the model load, uh, what we have done in order to use the Cloud AI, we have introduced a new uh, operator in Torch APM, which is uh, to pack the weights uh, such that they are uh, laid out in memory in a such way that our gem kernels that are available in the Clay DI uh, library can use, can be uh, at the most performance level. So in this case, the input uh, to our uh, packing function are going to be the scales and weights that we have uh, uh, generated in a previous step. 
and then we pack it in a such way that we can use that as a, a right hand side input to during our model execution. During the model execution, uh, we have uh, added uh, another op uh, to uh, ATM set in uh, PyTorch, which does the quantized matrix multiplications when the weights are in it for. What this step does is basically quantize on the left hand side. Your uh, input uh, can be FP32, in our case, it was FP32. And then at runtime, it is going to quantize uh, the um, uh, the uh, input uh, to intake and pack it in a such way that it has the optimal memory layout for our kernel to run. And then our uh, Clyde kernel, in this case, uh, you can see here that we are running at our left hand side input was a quantized asymmetric um, intake uh, input uh, that is that has been packed using four by eight. And now right hand side matrix here is going to be was quantized uh, symmetrically such that uh, the numbers are in four int and it was blocked by uh, in eight byte format and it is running uh, neon extension uh, eight bit internet matrix multiplication. So once we have passed those inputs to our kernel, uh, we accumulate the result to FP32 and now our output is a destination matrix which has the shape uh, M uh, by M. Now to demonstrate uh, the performance uh, of this change that we have made, uh, we have run uh, our uh, changes uh, on a AWS Dragon 3 uh, processor. And this is an ARM-based instance uh, that is powered by our ARM newest 3 one designs. And compared to a previous generation of Graviton processors, which was Graviton 2, uh, it has about 25% of a performance increase. Uh, it has three times ML performance increase, and it is using 60% less um, energy. There are different EC2 instance types that you can use uh, from AWS Cloud. So these ones are general purpose um, M7 ones. They are ones which are compute optimized, uh, like C7 GDS, C7 GN, and also ones which are memory optimized where they have uh, additional memory uh, being added uh, to those instances. In our case, the results that we are going to show have been obtained on a C7 GN instance. And in our case, we have used a 16 threads uh, to run the results. Now, before I show the results, uh, you can see uh, when we run a uh, Lama 2 model, uh, which has seven, seven, uh, uh, seven bit uh, parameter size, you can see that after time integration, the performance is visible even to the naked eye in terms of you get much better text generation than uh, before uh, we have integrated uh, Clyde uh, AI to PyTorch. Um, in terms of the performance, uh, you can see the results here. So uh, there are two sets of results that we are showing. The first set of results that you can see on the left hand side is a text generation phase. So that is the phase that is uh, generating uh, the tokens that you have seen on a uh, previous slide. And what we have done is that we have compared that to the uh, default path. So these are the results that you can obtain now using the GPT path um, uh, with a PyTorch nightly. And then uh, the uh, dark blue are the results when you're running exactly the same model uh, using the Lama to CPP. And the orange results are results that we have obtained with the integration of Clydea to PyTorch. As you can see, comparing PyTorch to Lama CPP, which is a vertical integrated framework, um, we are able to get results which are only a couple of tokens uh, behind. Um, and uh, for uh, both Lama 2, Lama 3, and Lama 3.1, uh, and there is still some work that we are working on uh, improving the Gemma model here on, uh, as well. On the right hand side are your prompt. Uh, phase. So this is basically the time to first token or in the, what it takes to uh, process uh, the prompt before running the tech generation phase. And as you can see here, uh, the performance that we are able to obtain with the Clyde AI is uh, much is or it is better than the performance that is obtained with the Lama the CPP. And as well, again, with the Gemma, there is still some optimizations on which we are working uh, to bridge uh, that gap. 
Um, in summary, uh, so we have seen how Clyde AI can uh, improve the performance of a uh, PyTorch. Um, it is an open technology. Uh, we are working on raising this PR, so you should be able fairly soon to uh, run all of these on your AWS instances or all, uh, on other unpowered uh, instances uh, that you are uh, working on. Um, you can find more about uh, the way how we are accelerating Gen AI and AI and ML workloads on our CPU by following the uh, QR code from here. And you should be able to hear more about the additional work that we are doing uh, on a PyTorch, um, uh, improving the PyTorch performance and what we are contributing at ARM uh, to make PyTorch work well uh, on our uh, platform. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this seminar, uh, webinar and that you are going to try out some of the work that has been presented here. Thank you very much for your time um, and thank you.